Welcome to episode seven of the Anarchy Roundtable. I am Joe. I am Mike. I am Mary. I'm Jason. And I'm Dan. So, um, tell us a bit about uh, where, where did you guys come from? Because you're not from the local area. Are you aliens? No, why, why the giraffes? <laughs> yeah, <what? laughs> aliens. Yeah, maybe we should start with the, the giraffes. That, maybe that's more interesting than uh, your your. They're like a totem animal, aren't they? Yeah, they're a totem. Yeah, animal. They're our totem. They're they're a totem animal. What Where's does that the, mean? Where's the I, I <laughs> sort of identify with the with the animal for, for various reasons. The um, giraffe has the largest heart of any land animal. Okay, mm-hmm. they have like three or four hearts. Because or they're so tall, they can see really. They could see they far have more than the one heart. They, they have it. a strange um, larynx there, where their aorta goes goes up. Yeah, they've got. It's not another heart, but they've got more muscles in their neck that keep them from passing out. When they raise their head all the way up, they pass out. <laughs> <laughs> they're they complicated have, creatures. They yeah. really are. But they're they're the spokesman like for you NBC. Nonviolent communication, Marshall Rosenberg. Uh, he's. Passed away now, but he's uh, started nonviolent communication back in the seventies, I think. Yes, and, I believe so. Yeah. And Katie. <laughs> I, try, and Katie. <laughs> I try to speak violently whenever I can. How did you guys become anarchists, especially you, Mary? Like, how how did you become an yeah, anarchist? Yeah, fuck Jason. We don't want to care about that. <laughs> yeah, start, start no, no, because I because I already know Mary has a vagina. No, I already know it, Jason. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I already know the story. <laughs> we all know she has a vagina. <laughs> we, we think so. All right. All right. How, how did you become an anarchist? So She's been I, I, I met uh, somebody on a dating website, and we started talking, and he introduced me to the concept of voluntarism, anarchism, uh, as well as nonviolent communication. Yeah. And when I found out about these ideas, I kind of dove in and... Research and watch videos and read up on and listen to podcasts and it just it makes sense and I had just kind of jumped down the rabbit hole of the religion thing so it's kind of easy to take those you know next steps and apply that same level of uh, skepticism with the state. You jumped out of the rabbit hole of religion or I, I jumped down the rabbit hole and and found my way out <laughs> of you know the the religious BS yeah. um, within the past couple of years before that. So how long ago did yeah. this? all happen the anarchism thing probably like four-ish years ago and the religion thing probably more like seven eight to ten years ago ish it was a philosophy class in high school where i started going down the, the rabbit hole of the religion thing but yeah i, I identify as an anarchist in high school and like I, would have, I got in trouble in art class with like this kid who was not an anarchist, and he definitely hated me for being an anarchist. But so this isn't. I wasn't. Um, a, I wouldn't say I was even a serious anarchist at the time. I wasn't serious about much of anything, really. But yeah, I don't know. I, I definitely went like the same way as like Mary did, with like losing the, my religion first, and then realizing that the state is basically another form of the same thing. I lost my religion first, but. I re- rejected it when I was about six years old. <laughs> I was like, this is bullshit. You know? Yeah. I made it a lot further back than that. <laughs> oh, I got baptized like at least two times. You know, it was when Santa Claus, and then the next day I was like, wait a minute, yeah. Santa yeah. Claus is bullshit. <laughs> you bought into it the whole, the whole well, time. Up until, up until I was in my mid 20s almost. Yeah. But at that point, it was already in decline post like high school. That was like. Two years ago, you were in your mid twenties. <laughs> no, no, I lost right. it in two thousand nine, so I've been lower twenties. Yeah, early. I was twenty three, twenty two at the time, something like that. That's when I started really started becoming atheistic. Yeah, so Jason, I didn't realize you were already an anarchist before we met. I just kind of well, thought you picked it up from Mary. Like so I, that's like I said in high school, I wasn't all that like. I wasn't thoughtful about it, but, you know, I was definitely not headed down the wrong track by rejecting the authority. So did you guys already know each other when you met Scott? I didn't know. I hadn't met her until 2012. So it was after. So you guys are both already anarchists, and then you met... Yeah. We have very similar... very happy meeting. We have pretty similar stories. Our parents are fairly similar people, and we grew up 
like together Small apart, town. like You're forty five minutes away from each other. But yeah. when you roll the same rafts, that, that, <laughs> helps. <laughs> that helps. Yeah, that helps. Yeah. <laughs> and how did you guys meet? A uh, dating website. Yeah, we met on, also, online. Oh shit! Yeah, we met online. So, yeah, and I met a girl website. online who introduced me to the term voluntarism, <laughs> and I, mean, I jumped down the rabbit hole. Excuse me for that. But. <laughs> I thought it was a giraffe hole. So you had the? Hole. Did you have the word voluntarism in your profile? I I take a lot of uh, words like voluntarism, anarchism. I put you know uh, buzzwords, hit words, whatever. Something clickable like the, links. Clickable everywhere. Links yeah. everywhere. Okay, Cupid. I don't have that. I don't know. They're all right. They're better than the plenty of fish site. I think, as far as the the singles thing, it'd be nice to have a specifically anarchist dating website, but okay, I don't know. know. Well, it's kind of neat yeah, that anarchy like was three spread women through on Christian mingles through <laughs> dating <laughs> that way. Yeah, um, I proselytize for liberty on yeah. my on my dating profile for sure. Talk to people mm-hmm. about oh, it. Oh yeah. <laughs> So what I was um, for conversation. What, what I was getting at earlier about where you came from, you guys live on the other side of the state from where we are now. Yes. Um, how did you connect with us? I connected with you guys basically me and Scott Banfield and Zeke Woods and Katie and who else? Wes um, Wes Bertrand. Uh, who did the Complete Liberty podcast. Uh, who else was there in the early days? We started this uh, nonviolent communication thing online, and then the MPLC, I think, grew out of that with Katie and Danny, right? It's possible, the, yeah. So I kind of met you met you guys through through Scott and coming to uh, you mean MPLC. Scott? I met That's Scott who, on Plenty of Fish. That, that was the dating. Uh, that was the, yeah. he introduced me to all these ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Voluntarism. And so, um, after that, you had driven across the state many times to hang out with us. Yes. And quite a few times. <laughs> yeah. We've and driven out your way quite the a reason I'm bringing this up is the the draw of the community is such a powerful um, tool for spreading anarchy, for spreading um, the message of of freedom. Yeah. And it's it certainly worked with you guys, and we're definitely glad to have you come out. Yeah, we ended yeah. up camping with um, somebody that I uh, met on OK Cupid as well at Pork Fest mm-hmm. uh, last year. Yeah, yep. so met Gone on OK Cupid as well. And Joe said that you guys sold your car to go to Pork Fest last year. <laughs> or that was we this definitely year. did. We, yeah. we used the. We Proceed. put her truck in my tank. Yeah, pretty much. We used Which her truck for gas money. Yep. And, yep. So, <laughs> Pork Fest must have a pretty big draw for you to be willing to, to give up your second vehicle in order to go out there. What is it about Pork Fest that so attracts you to, to make you, you go through that to get there? It's you show up and you immediately have something in common with everybody. Yeah, I mean, you're seven surrounded days by of people. Like, yeah, solidarity and true freedom. Like you really are free to do what you want. Regardless, if you're a psycho, you're probably not free to do exactly what you want. But I'm not psycho, so I'm free right. to do exactly what I want. <laughs> poor face. Yeah. I heard there was a story about a, a cop running around looking for somebody and he had difficulty. Are you familiar with that? I thought that it I was, heard something about the first couple of days it was an you. IRS so there was a tax guy. Car, a tax, yeah. tax guy. That's what I heard about. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I did not I hear about, about any that. actual law enforcement yeah. officers. There was, a, yeah, there was a video. It might have been taxes or something to do with fines, but the state was coming around, and they were, like, checking off. They were looking at people's license plates, if I recall correctly, and a bunch of libertarians kind of surrounded. It almost sounds like The Godfather. You see, There's a scene like that in The Godfather. <laughs> But a bunch of libertarians like surrounded them and said, what are you doing here? And like, well, we're here to, uh, you know, assess fines and fees and everyone was basically armed. And so they said, we don't want a conflict. And they're like, well, then you should probably leave. And they left, but they, they came back or tried to come back a couple yeah, times. Yeah, it was about, uh, I think they were 
I thought it was checking a business license yeah, and making sure yeah. everybody was was, vendor was legal in some way or another. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how did you I'll like having a Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest twenty minutes from your house this uh, that was last nice. couple of years? That's freaking sweet. Yeah, yeah. I had it for I really two years in a row now. Yeah. yeah. Is that similar to Pork Fest? It's quite yeah. similar. It's, it's just similar. smaller. It's just it's smaller. ten times smaller. Yeah. 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 yeah there's about a thousand. Kind of cool because hundred people. We mostly know each other at hundred and fifty at Liberty Fest. Fest. Yeah. Liberty Fest, I think you know half of us knew each other at least uh, fairly well, mm-hmm. which is pretty neat. Yeah, that's the that's neat too because of Pork yeah, Fest there are strangers, yeah. but you know, and Joe and I uh, at Pork Fest. we drove down to Anarcon uh, a couple weeks after. That's Liberty in Fest. Uh, that's. Put on by the Liberate RVA, that's uh, Richmond, Virginia. They put it. They held it in the northern part of the state. Um, what was it Gore? Gore, Virginia, I think it was. Cal Malinet. Yeah. yeah. Cal put that on with uh, his friends down there, and that was fun as well. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, definitely. If you can get to an event where you can hang out with a bunch of anarchists, I highly recommend it. Um, we, I think you would probably agree with that. Definitely. <laughs> now, besides Porkfest, where where have you gone? Besides, or besides Porkfest and about see the New Year's Eve pool party. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, where we're at right now. More like the camping trip. We're starting anywhere with, else. Uh, we did stay. We stayed at the Keen Activist Center, which was kind of neat. After yeah, we not this Porkfest. not this past year, but past the years year. um, first couple of years we went. Um, so tell us a little that. bit about the Keen Activist Center. I guess it's changed quite a bit. It's not. I'm, we didn't go back there this last time. So. Yeah, we. we first were, uh, year we, we kind were of grafting instead. It was, it's like hanging out. There's bunks, um, mm-hmm. and I think there was a couple of people that actually had rented rooms on one. It, this, the house is like split in two, and they do like the recording. There's the Liberty Radio Network, and that's yep. over on the right hand side of the house. And if everything's the same as it was last year, there's the bunk house on the left, and that's where we got to stay. Yeah. Didn't um, Rich say you live next door to that? Rich Paul. Yeah. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah. yeah. You talked to uh, oh Chris Cantwell. Yeah, he lives across the street. I remember Rich Back talking about the radio network. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> what was that episode six or was that five? It was six, I think. I think, I think it was six. We talked. Was to talking a little better in six. To <laughs> <laughs> five was the uh, drunk fest, I guess. I yeah, know. five was a crazy episode. Rich and James got My a little wasted. Down, so I'm, I'm actually yeah. feeling that that one shot. It. Good for yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. You brought some art with you guys, too. Yes. This is the uh, second of two large collages I've worked on. They both can be found online, and I'll make sure you guys got links so you can put them up. Uh, this is the second piece I've done. It's a tree in the center. It's all collage. Um, closer. It's a, it's a tree in the center. There's two figures, one on each side. On this side, we got the negative, and we got the the figure striking the root of the negative and the and the and the bullshit. And then on the right hand side we've got the, the nurturing and the empathy. And this piece is called The Need is Great, which appears right there and right there. And all piles upon piles of, of free magazines and looking through things and pulling pulling these ideas um, and and balancing it out and I got the intent to do a, a third piece as well, uh, but I'm going to give myself a break before starting on the, on the third piece. We got a Ooh, here, present for a Lou Fiend. Yes. Lou, Lou's Pigboard. Lou, oh. Lou's Pigboard. This is for, for our Bacon. friend Lou Fiend. <laughs> Lou Fiend from the Freedom Fiends. Mm-hmm. And so this was a a cutting board that we found, okay. and it had a cutout of a pig, and it had like Tyson or some some brand name or something. And we brought it to Lou, I think, a couple years ago for the uh, MPLC Freedom Fest. And he said, well, I don't need a cutting board, but you guys want to do something cool with it. And so <laughs> for, for a couple years, it kind of sat around, and I finally, I finally did something with it. And so this is going to eventually make it up to Lou. That's cool. Is Lou coming this weekend? I don't think so. I think I'm going to end up having to send this uh, send this with somebody who's going to make it to the Winter Fest. He didn't think so, unless he some surprises us. But uh, yeah, he was going to. Yeah, when I talk, we'll probably give it to you, Joe, to give it to uh, Lou at the Ritters at Winter Fest. 
Right, right. Are you guys coming up to uh, win? I don't know if we're going to. We're probably probably not going to be able to make it. So we definitely like to have our festivals, don't we? We've got um, um, the Michigan Peace and Liberty Fest. We're at the... 2016, uh, I guess we, we call it 15, 16 New Year's Eve party, pool party, and then we've got Winterfest. We have a camp out in September. It's, yeah, it's Anarchy Island. We have um, Liberty Fest will be what, the last weekend of August? Last weekend of August, right? And the week following. It'll be, uh, be, uh, be um, Scott's thing? I thought the Anarchy Island he did in the middle of September. It's like in the middle of September. We we go out to an island in a um, small lake and just pitch tents and have fun and anarchy for the weekend. Um, I guess kind of the theme for this whole episode is community and the just the power of um, being around people who understand you, I think, is very... Um, it, it's it's a wonderful feeling when you when you first when it first happens to you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like this rush, and then and then after a while, it's almost like doing a drug because after a while you get used to it, and then being around regular people starts to be a real drag. And you want to find other people and turn yeah, them on to your new. Drug. Yeah, I've said it before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a couple of years ago, I felt I was all alone in the world with my crazy ideas, and you know. You know, and then yeah, I mean, you're so crazy. Met you guys, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's also why I brought yeah, up earlier. Really, you, uh, you, Jeffrey Tucker thing, and uh, you know, met, you know, the MPLC, went and hung out with you guys, and you know, it was like, that was like pretty cool. Well, and that's why I brought up earlier you guys driving across the state. Um, the the draw of being around other anarchists is is very powerful. Yeah, and um, you know, one of the things that that I, I want to put out there with this this video series is to encourage other people to do what we do because it does feel so nice you know wherever you live there there might actually be a group near where you live that you don't know about there are people in Michigan who don't know that we exist and we haven't found yet um, you know there's there's groups in Arizona just... Chicago Virginia obviously New Hampshire um, North Carolina group. there's groups that already exist you can start your own group there's um, you, you can look on meetup.com to see if there's a group near you or Facebook. Or a meetup group. Or you could start one. There's um, dozens and dozens of freedom-related groups on meetup.com. I don't know if they're all anarchist groups, but um, any freedom-related group is right picking grounds for anarchists. We've grabbed a lot of people from the Libertarian Party. Um, we had people come from campaign for a tiny bit more liberty to or campaign for a longer <laughs> leash. Um, <laughs> we, we've had them come to our events and become anarchists after hanging out with us. So, you know, these are people who already know that there's a problem in the world and are looking for solutions and recognize the need for freedom. So don't be afraid to venture out to some of these groups as well. The Fifth Amendment uh, Center, we, or Tenth Amendment Center. We, Tenth, yeah. yeah we, <laughs> we went to an event. We're not going to talk about the Fifth Amendment. Yeah. <laughs> I refuse to talk about right. that. Yeah. But, but we went to an event by the Tenth Amendment Center, and they drew, like, I don't know, 20, 30 people to watch this video that featured Tom Woods through about 80% of it. About the Tenth Amendment. Yeah, I think I don't think we should exclude people that aren't already there. I think uh, you know, Minarchist. I put a meme. I saw a meme, you know, a little while ago that uh, you know, minarchist is six months away from being an anarchist, mm-hmm. and literally about two years ago, uh, I started going on Facebook and um, you know, got into you know, an argument with me against like twenty anarchists and basically. Say, I had rejected anarchy as a philosophy like 20 years ago, but I've been a libertarian, you know, since I was around 20-ish or something. I've been a minarchist, even though I didn't even know what a minarchist was until a couple of years ago, but I didn't think anarchy would work, and I still have reservations, of course, but, uh, you know, if somebody told me, he goes, well, you know, they started all attacking me and getting personal, and, you know, and then one person kind of like, you know, hey, you know, I see your... your 
you know, you're you're probably you're going to be you're not long away from being an anarchist, you know. <laughs> and uh, you know, then I uh, a few weeks, you know, a month or two later, I uh, saw that Tucker was coming. Jeffrey Tucker was coming to Anar to U of M, and uh, went there, met you, and uh, a bunch of other MPLC people. And uh, I was like, oh shit, should I go hang out with Tucker or them? And I went and hung out with you guys, and. Uh, here I am. It turned out that you made the right choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're brutal. Well, we get to <laughs> and now we're taking over your house. <laughs> <laughs> well, because Tucker was actually leaving. And no, we, we were, we're actually, I went there after we yeah. all broke up. It was a good time. Yeah. Then yeah, I'm going to go to Anarchapulco in a couple of months. Anarchapulco. Tell us more. I don't know anything about it. You're right here at Anacapoco, porque hablo poquito español. <laughs> South America somewhere, right? Uh, it's Mexico. It's Mexico. North America. Yeah. North, North America. America. I heard there was something in, like, Chile or... Yeah. Oh, oh. Or some shit. We don't have time uh, to talk about that. All right, we're going to over that. No. Anyway, go back to your... It's, yeah. it's by the same guy, though. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, but anyway, um, yeah, it's, I wanted to go last year, and didn't make it and I'm only 95% sure I can go you know it depends on how work goes but uh yeah, I bought my ticket for Bitcoin I got it like the last day of the discount but I paid like $150 in Bitcoin but now it's that 150 is worth 300 so I guess I could have waited but <laughs> so Anarcopoco is an anarcho-capitalist conference in Acapulco Mexico um it's, it's a third or fourth I think it's third the second month. one Oh, okay, it's be put on by Jeff Berwick. Um, Some of our friends have moved down there. Uh, yeah, Atra, 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 and Steve. And Steve, yeah, yeah. yeah they were at the fest. Yeah, yeah. 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 they, they, they moved down. Did you get a chance to hang out with them? Oh, they, they, they moved off and yeah, they yeah. yeah, I talked to her a little bit. I'm going to try to do one of these round tables down there, one or two down, one down there. Yeah, we've got a a small anarchist community down there. Well, near the place to be crawling with anarchists for the uh, the fest. Yeah, that's uh, Mexico. <laughs> that's a party in them. Uh, no, I mean because of the fest, the or the the conference, there'll be a lot of people there. So plus um, it's Mexico. Yeah, plus yeah. it's Mexico. <laughs> it's Mexico. <laughs> I know Amanda Rockwitz is going. Um, I think Larkin Jeffrey Rose Tucker's going. Larkin Rose Lark is going. Yeah, Larkin uh, Rose is breaking out of his um, his media silence to and, give a talk uh, at Arcapoco. Uh, what's his name that spoke at Liberty Fest is going to be there? Oh, I don't know. Who spoke at Liberty Fest? A lot of people spoke at Liberty Fest. Well, the main one. Oh, I got to remember. Oh, Kokesh. Oh, Adam Kokesh. I believe he's going to be there. So there'll be a lot of celebritarians there. <laughs> or Cantwell, for what I recall. <laughs> is Cantwell going? No, he just made up a new word. Like <laughs> he called Tucker a fag or something like that. So now libertarians. Oh, yeah, Cantwell's going to be there. No, he's. as far as I say, no, he's not. He called Tucker he won't. Because he called Tucker a fag right. and it pissed oh. off... Uh, uh, Berwick? Yeah, Berwick. Oh, he's incendiary. <laughs> <laughs> Berwick or, or Cantwell? Cantwell. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Well, he's gone full-blown retard status again. Yeah. Well, sort of. we we yeah we already had a whole episode where we talked about Cantwell. Yeah. Well, not a whole episode, but we we, we got on the Cantwell topic. Before. They had a pretty good uh, they had a good uh, thing with uh, uh, Brett Finat and uh, School Sucks a couple of weeks ago. It was pretty. Important. Oh, he was on there. What, what were they talking about? Oh, everything. But uh, you know, Cantwell did not come off as a psycho. I don't I don't really pay that much attention to him, so I don't know. But some of the stuff, anybody that would uh, support Trump seems a little bit weird. I can't. He's going to make America great right again. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate that slogan. <laughs> great. It just sounds dumb just coming off the tongue. <laughs> Yeah, well, great. But he's got cool, he's got <laughs> cool hair, though. I saw this meme on Facebook where they had Obama's list of things that he was going to do and Trump's list of things that he wants to do. And they're identical. They're identical, <laughs> except for instead of making America great again, we had hope and change. Other than that, same. It, it was the oh, same, right. and I'm not sure hope and change is that much different from make America great again. I noticed that was platform is a level platform. Every slogan from every presidential candidate, candidate, it's always 
dismissing or it, it puts down the United States and then it says, I'm the better alternative. Right. Everyone going all the way yeah. back through history, it's always, this situation sucks right now, America sucks right now, here's how I'm going to make it better. Yeah. I, I don't know, I find it interesting just because no one seems to have picked up on this. <laughs> it gets uh, suckier and suckier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah which, uh... No matter which, which puppet. I, I don't know if we have time to talk about this, but... Yeah, we do. How can we, as anarchists, live a positive, fruitful, happy, loving, productive, optimistic, not angry, not paranoid life when we know that the state will most likely continue to grow and become more oppressive and evil and repressive and possibly even attack us for our words and for these words and our beliefs. I would say have fun whenever possible. Like, I got a ticket. I'm going to fight a traffic ticket in the uh, end of January in like Allegan fun. County. And I've got I've already got 100 uh, ones already marked up uh, to go in there and pay the ticket. And I'm going to go in there. I'm gonna wait, the did, didn't you end up in jail for this before? Well, the time before... <laughs> you were resisting arrest. Right. No. No. Right. Not well, even. You were being a disorderly person. She was. They asked or her to leave, disturbing. and she was leaving. Was I was on my way out, but no, yeah. no. Because so this time I'm going to go in there. I'm going to do the the Mark Stevens thing with the unsigned plea of guilty, so mm-hmm. the judge can't say, "Oh, well, you're not going to plead. You can't, you're refusing to plead," which they do to you. Um, so I'm not going to refuse to plea, but I'm going to just, I would like to ask a few questions while I'm here today. And so I'm going to have fun with it. I mean, mm-hmm. I've got the hundred dollars. I already what know it's going to be a speeding. What, how much over? Wrote me up for... Then 15 over? Yeah, it wrote, me up, over. it wrote me up for five over, but yeah, I was, it was, yeah, I was coming into town. I was slowing down. And so what's your plan on going to court? Other than showing up with an unsigned plea of guilty, I don't know, asking asking maybe about the uh, the fact that they all work for the same same thing, the uh, uh, the state. They all work for the same thing, so it's conflict of interest. I mean, basically, it's when you go to my court, court <laughs> um, if you go in there and and they're going to take you and you're going to talk to the city attorney, district, you know, whatever. Yeah. Last time I did it was a cop, and they're going to say. All right, I can give you impeding traffic. It'll be $175, no points, no blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I talked And you to say, me. okay, and, uh, or not. <laughs> In Michigan, they don't really... I talked to the well, we got to explain, we gotta explain to the, the audience. They, um, they didn't have a way to take the, um, take the points off. So we have to explain for the audience. In Michigan, the um, legislator took the ability of the courts to remove points from tickets away, but they found a loophole... In that they can take any traffic ticket and have you plead to um, impeding traffic, and that's a zero point ticket in Michigan. So that's something that they offer people to plead to hmm. often in court. Um, you, oh, yeah, you still right. have to pay the Almost state money, the but there's no points, which means your insurance doesn't go up for three to five years, and it's it's in Michigan makes it better for you. Fortunately, we have the highest insurance costs in the country and you know, I, know, I think uh, that's good for the uh, it's very high industry. for the insurance industry you know they I you know I, I'm glad they're able to prosper out of a puff of sweat of our well, brow or backs I had a, fr- I have a friend and, <laughs> and maybe one day she'll cost. come on the show and talk about this but she was telling me because she worked in automotive insurance and she was saying because we are no fault state um, if you get into a major injury in a car accident your insurance company will basically do everything they can to not pay out, and it's very hard to even then go after the um, the fault or the person who actually hits you or whatever. It's hard to go after their um, insurance company as well because again, we're no fault. And she, she said they will bankrupt you <laughs> trying to avoid paying maybe seventy thousand dollars worth of like uh, medical care or something like that. So. I would say if you're going to be on Michigan roads, be very careful. <laughs> Don't get yourself killed or maimed. I had to pay sixty-five dollars just for medical coverage in my car. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like South Carolina, it's like a hundred dollars. I definitely do. Every year, I spend more on insurance than I than I spend on any single one of my cars. Are you on PLNPD? I'm on PLPD. Huh. 
And every year I spend about a grand. In between insurance. health and insurance. And I've never bought a car for over $2,000. I figured yeah. out a few years ago, it's costing me like 25, 30 grand a year for health, house, flood, all this stuff. Hello. <laughs> Our. Our guests for the uh, New Year's Eve party are beginning to arrive. We have Jacob in the house. Do you want to come on over and show your face for the uh, Anarchy Roundtable for a moment, Jacob? Well, you don't have to. You don't have to, but... We don't really care. (laughs) Are you a minority? (laughs) (laughs) He's not the only token. (laughs) Uh, We didn't have a seat. (laughs) A new token in the house. (laughs) What's your uh, heritage? Welcome to the Anarchy Roundtable, Jacob. What is your heritage? Any of them curious? He's Uh, Latino. Mexican, Polish, German. Anarchopolk. That doesn't count. (laughs) It counts. You do have some black hair, though. Thanks. I'm not talking to you. (laughs) So, Jacob, what brought you to us? Um, We're going to start grilling him. (laughs) (laughs) How did did you find us? Speaking to the beard, no? Um, and, And also, how did you find anarchy as a philosophy? Google Maps. I think Mike's got it. Uh, yeah, really, how did you? I heard about the first uh, Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest on uh, uh, the Bad Quaker podcast. Oh, Bad was, Quaker. What were you doing listening to that? <laughs> what are you, Christian? Are you some kind of radical? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, I love ben, ben Stone was uh, yeah, probably was, my favorite podcast. He was a great podcast. I miss it. Uh, what brought you to listen to that real quick? Yeah. Don't mind me asking. I, I was listening to the Freedom Fiends, so Michael Dean kept talking about Bad Quakers, so I thought I'd give that a shot. But uh, in general, I don't know, around 2008, the, uh, the financial crash, I was... Uh, it's boring. <laughs> we'll talk fast. <laughs> I was not prepared for this. You were definitely not. You not, just came walking in the door. You don't even have your coat on. I brought. Now you're in an I interview. Brought, <laughs> I, I, I brought stuffed jalapenos. There we go. Are you Mexican or something? <laughs> <laughs> Might be. Oh. I just teased you. So I just I was researching. I came. Up, I had uh, heard about. Uh, uh, Ron Paul a few months earlier, so I started looking into some of his stuff. And Ron that, Paul, the catalyst to the anarchy. And that led me to uh, a lot of people. Mises.org and... Uh, sure enough. You know, eventually... Uh, the rabbit hole. Yeah, exactly. You just went down the rabbit hole and probably spent some time on YouTube. But when was your well. first uh, Liberty Fest? Was it uh, was this your third one this year or your second? Oh, this was the third. I came to the first one, but oh. I was only there for half the day. Oh, okay. I met you that time, too. But it was the first one over in over by Dalton, right? At Circle Pines? Or was that the first one over at Brighton? No, the one in Brighton. Oh, okay. I didn't go there. I didn't know you guys then. That was the year before you were hooked up. Yeah. Feel free to edit any of this. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, well, no, I mean it's interesting though. You had no idea that we were filming when you came in. Well, well I had some really idea. Well, yeah, I the think thing, it, it, it was sign on the door, yeah. but I mean, Next you didn't time know. You this see was... that sign, you're gonna be like, I'm gonna sit in my car for about an hour. <laughs> no, but, but the point was, you didn't know what this was going to be going on probably when you got here. But then, you know, you sat down right away, and you're able to articulate a. An, an anarchy story. We were uh, talking about, you know, the community we have here, and uh, you, you drive, what, a couple hours to get here, don't you? <sighs> Two and a half hours. Yeah. Here. Is it worth it? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you come to uh, yes, a man. lot of uh, meetings and a lot of events, and uh, so I think yeah. it's probably worth it to you. I know. No, I yeah, it, yeah. I, I mean, had fun here. Uh, uh, Halloween, the party you had. So. Yeah, when your window got broken in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the fake ass police. <laughs> yeah, we were pulling pranks on people. We had one of our uh, guests dressed up as a cop for Halloween, and he would knock on the door very loud and. Um, Trick people. Every time someone did you get tricked by him? Every time a new no, person here came before they showed, or like right we were, when they showed up, it was like we were getting busted by the cops. But it was 
It was one of the first wines fell for it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Danny fell for it hard. <laughs> Which Danny? Mm, the one that's not you. <laughs> oh, well, when you say Danny, I'm, I, Danny. When I I just walked in, I didn't give a shit. I was like, "You're not a cop," and I just. <laughs> straight, straight. I just shut the lights off and said, "Nobody's home." When he first did, cause he was like the first one here, I think. I thought it was him, but I wasn't sure. So I was like, eh. "Yeah." Yeah. So back to the the idea of the commute. Um, I've talked to a lot of people on Facebook talking about setting up um, anarchy groups. And they'll say things like, you know, uh, there isn't one near me, or I, I don't know, um, people will drive that far, we're kind of spread out here. And that's that's one of the reasons why I bring this up. Um, you know, people are driving two or three hours to come to our events and um, come often enough for us to be friends. Um, I, we are fortunate enough to live in a large metropolitan, metropolitan area. area. Yeah, that definitely like helps. At least three million people within an hour or so. Even more within two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. So if you're setting up, if you're thinking about setting up a group, consider that people will drive two or three hours to come and hang out with you guys. Definitely. What, but we did where, pay where him. No, 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 <laughs> Alamo? Alamo? It's, no, it's Alamo. North of <laughs> oh, well, Remember the Alamo. Alamo? Well, there is an Alamo, Michigan. Is there? Uh, I didn't know that. There's a Hell, Michigan. There's a Hell, yeah. Michigan. I like Hell. I've been to Hell and back quite a few I see times. Oh, it's a horrible place. Hot Seco is right next door. Hell is nice. Home. Hell is it's a sweet. horrible place. Seco? <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. That's Menasha. Hell is actually freezing know. over That's tonight, probably. Over. Oh. Oh, it's awful. You think hell is freezing over tonight? It was frozen over the two times I went there. Yeah, I've been to hell and back a lot. There was a van in the lake. Well, this brings there were up... gunshots and everybody was wearing camo. Sweet. Well, this brings up a question I heard online from Kimberly Rodriguez. She uh, she posts a question. She's like, "Why are there so many uh, voluntarists and anarchists and libertarians in Michigan?" I responded with because I think Michigan's economic climate forced a lot of people to go researching into um, you know how the economy failed, and it brought them towards Peter Schiff and Ron Paul and all that. Hmm. So I'm kind of wondering what your take is on it. It's a possibility. Is, is there a lot of us here? Well, there's... I think there is. Yeah. But I think a lot of it comes from... I mean, you, you're probably right, but a lot of it comes from MPLC. A lot of people weren't anarchists before MPLC, and what happens is people invite their friends, their co-workers, or what have you, and it, it just grows and grows, and that, that's why I keep trying to stress throughout this, this whole um, episode that... Building a community of anarchists is an excellent way to attract people who are curious and searching for answers um, and to show them the philosophy of anarchy. And I think that's a pretty significant reason why there are so many of us here. Um, you know, you think about so many people have come to our events who weren't anarchists when they started coming. And, yeah. and, you know, they hang out with us, and we're, we're fun to be around. We're not killing people. We're not killing people. Um, and... Bruce. And then, um... Run over you here, know, Bruce. After, after a while... <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. After, after a while, um, they, they end up becoming anarchists. It's happened... To, I know this, it's happened to several people. Well, the people... Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. The people I've met through the MPLC are... Uh, anarchists to begin with that I'm aware of. And I didn't see like anyone transition from like libertarian to anarchist. The only one that's really been a holdout has been uh, Fulner. He's the only one that's still... St he was an anarchist and then people convinced him that he wasn't because he doesn't believe in abortion. I think it was. or Well, I don't... No, it's not, that it, not because he doesn't believe in abortion. It's because he's willing to use force to stop someone to get an abortion. He believes that would be moral. So then people said well, he's not an anarchist. Not but it I depends disagree on your with definition it. of life. Yeah, exactly. If you, know, if you believe that somebody is being killed, then it would be justified to use... NAP. We, we can't both talk at the same time. We wow. just did. I know. It doesn't, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't work for the video. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I like the little uh, tiff you guys got into on the last one. <laughs> <laughs> I might have been drunk. What did we do? Oh, no, it was just about fractional reserve banking and how it works. And 
I, yeah. I don't know, but it, yeah, he's talking about episode four. We're recording episode seven now, but episodes five and six haven't aired yet. So to him, the last one is episode four. Um, anyway, what, what I was saying was, if you believe that someone is alive and they're being yeah. killed, then it wouldn't be a violation of the NAP to defend them. And that's what um, Jim is really um, advocating for. And that's why I've told him that doesn't make him not an anarchist. <laughs> Welcome to the Anarchy Roundtable, oh Bruce. God. Welcome. The microphone Don't itself. bring us down. What else? Don't you what? Oh, right, right, right. Yes, yes. <laughs> Should I sit here? If, if you, you would like. Wherever. Okay. I'm going to switch with sure wherever. This, this camera is still rolling. Rolling. Now that's a term the that comes from the yes. Old school. It's a, what do yeah. they call it? A pseudomorph. Do they really? Like, a, oh, like where they have a fake wood grain and it's made out of plastic. It's a pseudomorph. Okay. okay. Or the click that the camera makes now because it's not a human camera. Exactly. So, right. before we get to you, um, I just want to talk about the, the issue with this camera still rolling. This camera, which I didn't know when I bought it, I probably I might not have bought it if I had known has to be restarted about every 15 minutes and on the Canon website they'll tell you it's because there's a file limit and they don't tell you why but other cameras um, will they have the same file limit but they automatically create a new file at the end of the, the first file and Canon doesn't explain anything about why this camera has to stop at 15 minutes when others don't I was reading online and in the comment section um, of a of a website that was talking about this issue, they said that um, the reason is because if it records for more than about 15 minutes, then the government will call it a video camera, and there's a higher tariff on video cameras. Oh, so there wow. are cameras all across the United States that can't record as long as you might want They're them out to, to get because us. because they don't want to pay the tax in no, order it's to import we're anarchists. It's right. I'm taking it personal. <laughs> I had a digital yes. camera recorded. I thought like at least a half an hour. That that power so shot that I got. So this is um, in 1080p. It's limited to four gigabytes. So if I wanted to record, I could probably get like an hour out of uh, 480p. But it's on a different mode, or whatever. right? 1080p uses a four a much gigabyte file. Right, four it. gigabyte file, then it cuts off. So if it was 480p, then it would record for about an hour. If it's 720p, it might record for like half an hour. 1080p, we get 15 minutes. You get Bruce's story yet? Yeah. No, we have a story? Read, yeah. So, yeah. So, how did, what so brought you to uh, us? What's your story, Mark? What yeah. brought you I was, to us? Uh, I was born oh, a poor black man. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. Okay, Danny. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> My story of discovering liberty? Yes. Okay, so I was. Well, I guess when I grew up, my parents were conservative. Was this when you were still black? <laughs> uh, but I tended to have, in terms of my understanding of my own self as my property, that's something that I believed. I believed that I had the right to use drugs if I wanted to. Hell um, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Who said that? We've got Jeff wandering into the set with a, uh, a glass of beer. So on one hand, I appreciated... Um, conservative economics, free market economics, but on the other hand, I appreciated individual liberties. And in 1980, I was working for Duke Power Company, driving a car around as part of the job, and I found a flyer for Ed Clark, the 1980 Libertarian candidate for president. And I read the brochure, I got more information about the Libertarian Party, and this made a lot of sense to me. This seemed to be you know, much more freedom. Uh, so that's when I got involved with the Libertarian Party. And I, at the time, I was going to Virginia Tech. And uh, David Friedman, I believe at the time, was a professor at Virginia Tech. And the economics department there was very anarchist. I mean, he wrote The Machinery of Freedom, which explains how you can have a society with no government and the various things like courts, police, all of that could be uh, provided through market mechanisms. So and I joined the libertarian group there. And again, that kind of led me more toward anarchism uh, because, of, uh, because of that. So that was my introduction. When did you become a 
full-fledged fledged anarchist, would you say? Is that a recent thing? or Probably recent, because I, I... I mean, I think I understood those ideas and appreciated them, but then was active in the Libertarian Party, and, you know, I did things like ballot access, I helped out, things like that, but uh, became disillusioned with the political process and really stopped participating. And then I discovered this group ago. and found that these people, you know, that you folks are alive, like you're interesting people, you know, good discussions. And that sort of, I think, affirmed for me that, you know, th this position is a good position. It's a position where people are uh, actively involved in thinking about it. Discussing yeah, I don't it. remember how I got to libertarianism, but I've pretty much been a, like a hardcore minarchist since the 80s myself, so. So what you guys are both saying is that you're not just a bunch of teenagers trying to um, escape from your parents. No. Correct. No, no because people say that about <laughs> right. anarchists, are... just a bunch of crazy teens. Right. Yeah. 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 No, for me, it's yeah. a... Uh... Definitely it's not. a political philosophy yeah. with a lot of depth, and I've read a lot about it. There's a lot to learn about it, a lot of uh, issues that are discussed. So you mentioned David Friedman. He was also a part of how I discovered anarchy. I came up through economics. I've been reading economics blogs for years. David Friedman's an economist, and he was the, on the, he was the last one on the chain of economists that I came across, and uh, that was my first exposure to it. I will put in the show notes um, a link to the Machinery of Freedom, as well as David Friedman has um, done book tours talking about the Machinery of Freedom. If you don't have time to read a book, you can always watch the book tour and get probably at least half of the content of the book in a 45-minute book tour interview, which I love. You know, uh, who I'd like to mention, who really kind of opened my eyes up to a lot of things, from conspiracies to even spoke about anarchism quite a bit, was uh, Mark Scott. I don't know if you remember him. He was on the radio, yes. I think, in the 90s. And he really got me to thinking a lot more radically. He was uh, definitely a minarchist. You know, he was still a little pro-military, but, uh, but he was able to get me to where I was able to come to this, I think. And like I said, even before that, I was considered myself a libertarian, but I didn't see the... You know, it was I was more able to look at things a little bit more objectively after listening to him on the radio. So. Excellent. We should probably wrap this up um, as people are arriving and get this New Year's Eve party Mary. started. Come on in and say goodbye. Let's let's have a a goodbye and get a group photo for the uh, Anarchy Roundtable. <laughs> Nobody you know what? asked you, Danny. What? I'm, I'm just kidding. Come on. I'm going to grab a picture. Well, wait a minute. Let's say goodnight. Oh. We just said you got to, like, go arm in arm and oh, sing what are we gonna do? Kumbaya. We're going to sing Kumbaya. What's Fuck the up. anarchist version of that? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the government. <laughs> Fuck this. Fuck the state, my friends. Fuck, Fuck the state. Fuck the state, my friends. Fuck the state.